Well, hello, everybody. It is seven o'clock, and we're going to give you a few more minutes for you all to come on in. It is seven o'clock. Um, it's 60. Some of you all on already ready for Bible study on tonight. Um, and we are happy about it. Make sure that if you're on, if you can hear me, make sure you hit the share button. That is important to us. You know that by now. <clears throat> hit the share button on tonight. Please make sure uh, that you do that. Hit the share button if you would uh, on tonight. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It is good to see you on tonight. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. I'm just giving you a few more minutes to get on for we are ready for Bible study. It is another Thursday night and we are ready for Bible study. I hope that you too are ready uh, to dive into the word on tonight. To God be the glory for all the things uh, that the Lord has done. This, thank God. We this thank God. We thank God for all that the Lord has done. You must know that there is a little delay between what you hear and what I see, uh, see and hear on tonight. But I am grateful. If you're on, <clears throat> do me a favor and hit that share button. Let me know that you're on. Hey, hey, I see my mom is on. Deacon Burwell is on, Sister Johnson is on, Alvia is always on. I see you all, I see y'all. Did y'all hit share? Did you hit share tonight? <clears throat> We're waiting. We're just going to wait for a few more moments. Um, We're going to wait for a few more moments. I see Pat. I see you, Pat. I see y'all. Praise the Lord. All of our friends. Hey, Mark. Mark, what's up? I see you. All of you. All of you tonight. I'm just giving a few moments just out of courtesy. It's about 87 people. That's a good, that's that's good right there. Y'all do me a favor, hit share. I am just so grateful to be on tonight, grateful to be alive. So grateful that you are here to my Bible study family. Uh, certainly on tonight, I give you greetings in the mighty and marvelous, majestic, and miraculous name of the Lord Jesus. That name that's above every name, because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and certainly every tongue shall confess. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening to everybody. Hey, to my union family, I see all of y'all coming on. I'm looking at another computer uh, that keeps getting frozen, but I'm looking at this other computer on tonight. I am so happy that you all are with me. What time is it? <clears throat> I'm going to give it just a few more seconds and we're going to start and we're going to dive right in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hello, Miss Leslie Rayfoot. Miss Leslie, that's one of our seasoned saints uh, in the body. We are grateful that you are on, on tonight. Amen. Come on, y'all invite your friends. Come on, invite your friends. Invite your friends. I see you, Tina, Teresa, Annette, I see you. <laughs> hey, Mark, that's not a sweater. It's a it's a shirt. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. My mother-in-law's on. I see all of y'all. Hey, hey, everybody. It's 99 people. I'm going to see if the Lord going to give us just that one more. Yep, I hit it. It's 104. I see it. Good evening, everybody. Pastor Easley here, and I am so grateful for you being with us on tonight on this um Thursday night, Thursday night teaching, TNT, our Thursday night teaching um, in the word of God. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name and we thank you tonight for who you are and all that you have done. God, you have kept us with your powerful hand. And for that tonight, we give you praise and honor and glory. God, where would we be without you, God? God, we just thank you for the anointing, oh God, that runs fresh, oh God, in our life. So much so, God, we can declare that morning by morning, new mercies we see. God, we thank you, oh God. And we still declare, as we've done for the past few weeks, God, that in spite of pandemic, you are still the Christ. Be with us now, God. Now it is our prayer 
that you will open up our hearts and open up our minds that we may receive all that you have for us on tonight. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. So this week, or these past few weeks, just as we jump in, we've been dealing, um, as most of you know, with those things that stunt spiritual growth. So each week, we've been dealing with another topic. The first week, we just dealt with the whole issue of spiritual growth. Uh, the next week, we dealt with unhealthy relationships. Last week, we dealt with the whole fact of those who are unable to adapt to change. Y'all remember, I hope y'all are with me. Come on, I hope you're with me. And tonight, um, tonight we're dealing with a new topic and that topic is overcoming unbelief. That's our topic for tonight, is overcoming uh, unbelief. That's our topic for tonight so that you can, uh, y'all can write that down or what have you tonight, but overcoming uh, unbelief. And so what we have done each week is that we try to create a word or not create a word, have a word, if you would, a word of the week, just to add to your spiritual vocabulary, if you would, just to add to your spiritual vocabulary. And so tonight we are dealing with this word. This is our word of the day, pneumatology. The term pneumatology comes from two Greek words, namely pneuma, meaning wind, breath, spirit, um, use of the Holy Spirit, and logos, meaning word, matter, or thing. It is used in Christian systematic theology. Pneumatology refers to the study of biblical doctrine, of the biblical doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Generally, this includes such topics as personality of the Spirit, the deity of the Spirit, and the work of the Spirit, throughout scripture. That's just your word for tonight. Uh, just to add to your, um, just to add to your uh, spiritual vocabulary, if you would, that's your, that's your word for tonight. Amen. Uh, pneumatology. But tonight we are dealing with this whole issue tonight, if you would, of overcoming unbelief, overcoming unbelief. That's our topic, certainly for tonight, uh, overcoming unbelief. And so uh, y'all can write that down because it's coming to us tonight um, from the gospel according, uh, gospel according to Mark, Mark the ninth chapter, Mark the ninth chapter, uh, verses 14 through 19. Mark the ninth chapter, verses 14 through 19. I hope that you have your Bibles. It's not just enough for you to see it here because I do want you to go back um, and read it and study it for yourself. It is a familiar passage of scripture. Now you must understand also that whenever you're doing a teaching, uh, there are many angles in which you can uh, teach a text and so many uh, subject matters that you can pull from the text. And so we don't necessarily, uh, we, we're not teaching from all aspects of the text, but we have our focus area and our focus area uh, for tonight, as I've already shared uh, with you before, is overcoming, if you would, unbelief. And so let us get to our text, Mark 9, uh, 14 through 29. And here, and here it is, and you uh, feel free to read along with me. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who was possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion, into a convulsion. He fell to the ground, rolled around, foamed at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? 
from childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. That's where we're hanging out tonight. This is it. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. <laughs> I like that. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. Verse 26, the spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, thank you God, lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, the, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind come out only by prayer. The word of God for the people of God, certainly thanks be uh, uh, unto God. Thanks be uh, unto God on tonight. That comes to us uh, from the gospel according to Mark there. For those of you all, uh, we welcome those of you who are just uh, coming on on tonight. We are, we are grateful for, certainly we are grateful for for your presence on tonight. And so tonight, this is, this, is our, this is our topic for tonight, overcoming unbelief. As we're dealing with now, particularly, we want to pay particular attention to the father, to Jesus, to the father, and to the boy, and to the disciples. These are the characters. We're not necessarily talking about the crowd tonight, uh, but tonight we're talking about Jesus, the role of Christ here in this text. We're dealing with the role of the father, we're dealing with the role of the stark contrast between the father and the disciples. And pay particular attention that I said that tonight. We're paying attention between the contrast, if you would, between the father and the disciples. All right. Let us we want to take a look at that. So let's deal with just a little bit with the context tonight because we've already read the text. <clears throat> so what is happening? Jesus is just coming down now, if you would, from the Mount of transfiguration that's that's what's happening jesus is coming down now from the mount of transfiguration you read in the text if you look at context there's a large crowd of people who are gathering around they are waiting for him to come down the mountain if you would amen so he goes up to the top of the mountain and there's glory there but the work of ministry if you must remember is always done down in the valley. The people, there's a large crowd at the foot of the mountain, if you would, waiting for him. When he gets there in this crowd, child of God, uh, is a man who we identify. That's what the text is about. There's a man, there is no name. And he has a sick son, amen? He took him to the disciples. Now here it is, this is where our text picks up. When we meet the man tonight, he takes the boy um, to Jesus because you must remember now he has already taken him to the disciples. He's already taken him to the disciples. Of, and guess what? The disciples could not help him, right? The boy has been sick since birth. The boy has been sick since birth. All right. So that's just the context of what we're dealing with. Our, our subject matter tonight is dealing with the whole issue, certainly of unbelief. So that's where we want to jump in. There's a lot, if you would, that we could really pick up, if you would, from the, from the entire text. Now, there's a whole lot in this text, but I wanna pick up tonight, if you would, with this whole issue of, of unbelief. And so I wanna just, that, that's the issue we wanna deal with. So here's what I want to, uh, here's what I wanna share with you tonight. What does Jesus say in the text now that the criteria is for healing this sick boy. What is the criteria? It's right there. He says, everything is possible, come on, for one who believes. In other words, Jesus is laying it out here. He's, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that if you believe, if you've got faith, 
if you believe, then your son, that's what he's telling the boy, that's what he's telling the boy's father, your son can be healed. That's what he says. But look, y'all, there are two major distinctions in this text, if you would. I want to share with you tonight, uh, if you would, there, there, are two, there are two major, major distinctions here um, in the text. Give me one second. There are two major distinctions. I want y'all to pay particular attention to what, um, how the disciples respond, and I want you to pay particular attention to how the father responds. Uh, now, you must understand, the father says, I've already taken, the only reason he says, I'm still here, Jesus, is because my son been sick for so long. I, I heard that if I take him to the church, I mean, to the disciples, I heard that the disciples should be able to heal him. Jesus, I didn't come to bother you. I really came to the deacons. I mean, I came to the disciples. I came to, to the missionaries. I, I came to church folk. I, I came to the disciples so that they could heal him. But here's what I found out. They've been walking with you, but they have no power. That's, that's what he says. He says, so now, Jesus, I've waited here in this crowd because I need you to do me something. I need you to do something for me. Can you please heal my sick son? Now, we're going to see two, two, if you would, we're going to see two stark differences between the disciples, if you would, and the father. And I like this. I really like this. Listen, there are two major problems of the text. Here's the problems. The problem number one, you have disciples who are what? Powerless. And a father who's having trouble with his faith. Mm, y'all right, y'all can write that down. Y'all take notes now. Take notes. Here, so here, here's your problem here. Here are two major problems that we are going to extract, if you would, from the text tonight. Come on, y'all. And if you haven't hit share, hit share. And if you just joined us, can I just tell you, welcome tonight. Just welcome to all of you. Um, from this text here in the Gospel of Mark, Mark the ninth chapter, we're going to find now, we're going to find two major problems. Disciples who are powerless in this moment and a father who is having trouble with his own faith. Got it? That's what we're dealing with on tonight. So here, let's go here. The difference between the disciples and the dad. The disciples did not recognize at first what their problem was. Mm. And the dad recognized his own limitations. I want y'all to put this in your mind now. So when you begin to decipher between the disciples and the dad, the disciples who have been walking with Christ, who've been had a front row seat to his ministry, had no power. And they did not recognize in this moment how powerless they really were. But then here comes a dad who don't go to the union every Sunday. Matter of fact, goes to no church every Sunday. Who, who believes, who, you know, he believes that there's a God. He, he, he believes some, but recognizes that he has some limitations with his faith, my God. So you got disciples who ain't got no, prop, no, no power, who don't even recognize that they've got a problem. And you got a dad who recognizes from the beginning his own sense of limitation. So let's go here. You got different perspective. The disciples have witnessed him. They have witnessed the power. They've seen what Jesus can do. And they still in this moment, child of God, got a faith problem. <laughs> I like this. In, in this moment, they still got what? A faith problem. I like the dad. Why? Because the dad did not try to pretend. He was authentically himself and was able to recognize his own shortcomings. I like this, y'all. I, I really like this, y'all. I like this. Now, listen. The disciples, they've been with him. They've seen what Jesus can do. They've had a front row seat to miracle after miracle after miracle. But in the moment where someone 
who's living in a condition that needs to be changed, needed some power from the church, because that's what they represent, the church, the disciples were unable to help them. Mm. Uh, but the dad, the dad understood in this moment what? He understood, listen, I ain't come to pretend like I have no whole lot of faith. That's what the dad is saying. I ain't coming to pretend like I'm all holier than thou. He, he's authentically who he is, uh, and he understands his own shortcomings, and he also understands in this moment that his own lack of faith. I like that, y'all. Why? Because if you look at if you look at the text, as it says there in verse 24, immediately, this what listen, the boy's father exclaimed this. I believe, come on, that's where we are. Help me overcome my unbelief. Mm, that's what he says. So immediately, that's verse 24. We're going to back up a little bit and come back. But verse 24 says, immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. I like that, y'all. I, I really, I really like that. I, I really like that a lot. He says, I believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Uh, he's being honest about where he stands. He's being honest about his faith journey. He, he's being honest about what he has the capacity, come on, y'all, to believe. And he says to Jesus, you are the Christ. I've come here. I believe that my son can get help. But if the criteria for healing him is upon my faith, here's what I've come to tell you. There are some things I believe, but I've got some areas, Christ, uh, where I struggle with my faith. Come on, y'all. And if you want to grow spiritually, then you've got to deal with the areas of your life where you struggle, child of God, with your faith. I like that. See, because the truth of the matter is, uh, if you're going to grow spiritually and overcome unbelief, uh, you must have a spirit of authenticity. I like this, y'all. Come on, y'all. Uh, listen, now, uh, uh, listen, if you want to grow spiritually uh, and overcome unbelief, you must be, uh, you must have a spirit, uh, must have a spirit, y'all excuse my, my, there's a typo there. You must have a spirit of authenticity. Uh, listen, here's what I, here's what I want to share with you. Uh, he's, he, he's in this group. Come on. What we need to appreciate about the father is he is pure. I, I like this. I, I like this. He was around disciples. He's around other believers, but he knew that there were some areas in his life where he struggled with his faith. And come on, y'all, uh, is there anybody out there in the spiritual world tonight? Come on, uh, that can say, I go to church every Sunday. I trust in God. I love God. He's been good to me. Uh, but I must admit tonight that there are some areas of my life, come on, y'all, uh, where I literally struggle with my faith. Uh, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to be a better Christian. Uh, I've been on the journey, come on, y'all, a long time. Uh, but I must I say to you tonight, uh, I have some areas uh, where I struggle with my faith. Uh, and here's what I've come to tell you tonight. You don't have to feel bad uh, because your level of faith uh, is not like somebody else's. Come on, y'all, uh, level of faith. That's where, I, that's where I'm trying to help you tonight. Uh, see, you, 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 don't, you don't have to feel bad uh, because somebody else has seen, listen, seemingly has more faith uh, in a particular area than you do. Here, 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 here's what I like about the man. He's around all these other church folk, all these other so-called believers. Jesus says that if your son going to get healed, then you've got to have a portion of faith. And guess what he says to Jesus? He said, listen, I do believe. He says, but I, I need you to know from the, from the door, Jesus, uh, I need some help myself with my unbelief. And I've come to tell you, child of God, uh, that you don't 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 measure your faith by the size of what somebody else's faith you think looks like on the outside. 
Because guess what I've come to learn? A whole lot of folk got this all this church lingo and language uh, acting like they're faithful uh, or, or they have so much faith. Uh, but the truth of the matter is uh, when the rubber meets the road, there's a whole lot of folk, child of God, uh, that struggle with their faith. There, there are folk who go to church every Sunday who got a prayer life, uh, but come on, y'all, uh, but they struggle with their faith. Uh, and I come to tell somebody tonight, don't, don't beat up on yourself. Uh, see, because here it is. Uh, you don't have to impress others when dealing with your own spiritual journey. See, you, you, you are not happy. You ain't got to try to impress nobody else uh, when you're trying to deal with your own spiritual journey. Uh, listen, this man, won't, he was being authentically who he was. He was like, Jesus, listen, I could act like I got a whole lot of faith. He says, but the truth of the matter is uh, uh, I, I struggle uh, in some areas of my faith. Uh, and see, and, and here's the other part I want to share with you tonight. You ain't got to, you ain't, you don't have to be something that you're not. Mm, 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 mm. You don't have to be something. Uh, you, in other words, you ain't got to, you ain't got to put on a, you ain't got to put on a show. You, you don't have to be uh, something uh, that you're not. That's, that's, that's what I want to say. You don't, you don't, you don't have to do that. You ain't got to put on no show uh, for nobody else. You can be authentically, come on, uh, who you are. You can be authentically who you are. You don't, you ain't got to try to be uh, uh, nothing else but just who God has created you, uh, child of God, uh, to be. Yeah, in this moment, he was not trying to be anything else but a father. Mm, get this, y'all. He wasn't trying to impress not even the Christ. He was just being honest about his own faith journey. Listen, he, he, he wasn't trying to be anything else. The only thing he cared about really in this moment, child of God, uh, was making sure that his son was healed. In face of disciples, in face of the Christ, he is struggling with his faith and he knows it. But guess what? He didn't try to hide it. And guess what? All he says, listen, I believe but I need you, Jesus, to help me even in this moment with my unbelief. Really, he wants God, all he wants is for God to heal, heal. Listen, God and what God desires from us is for us to be, be authentically who we are. That's what God wants from us. <clears throat> See, God don't want the church you. He don't want the work you. He don't want the public persona you. All God is looking for is the authentic you that even in moments of faith failure and even in moments when your faith is not strong as you would like it to be and even in moments when it feels as though uh, you're struggling in a season of your life with faith. Can I dare tell you, God only look, all, all God is looking for is authentically who you are. You ain't got to be nothing for nobody else. You ain't got to put on no airs and no show. Come on, y'all, for nobody else. All God wants is you. He All he wants is your pure heart. And, and even in moments when you are struggling with your faith, I've come to tell you, all God wants is really you. We almost done, y'all. We almost done. But here's, here's my next thing I want to share with you. Notice this in the text. Notice this. Jesus... If this is an issue of faith, and if the issue of the text as we deal with tonight is really the lack of faith that the disciples had or the lack of faith that the father had, get this, notice this in the text. You might not ever pull this out before, but notice this. Jesus only rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith not the father. <laughs> oh, I like this, y'all. Notice this now. Jesus only rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith. Come on. Not the father. Did y'all get that? Because the father was honest about where he stood. And so Jesus, but the disciples who have been walking with him, the disciples who have been with him, these disciples were struggling with something that they had already had a front row seat to. 
And so even in this moment, child of God, you must understand that there are those who may look like they've got a whole lot of faith, but yet they struggle. And here's what I've come to tell you, and I'm not even up so upset with the disciples, but here's what I've come to say, that there comes moments where you simply got to understand, you just got to be authentically who you are. Don't try to be nothing else. Don't let your titles try to overshadow who you are and where you are and your walk and your journey. You just got to be who God has created you to be. And so when it was time to rebuke, guess what? Jesus only rebuked the disciples because there was an expectation of them that if you've been with me this long, if you watched me and somebody, it's all of you all come, all of you disciples are here together and none of y'all, come on y'all, none of you, that's right, I see y'all, y'all, I see some of y'all are responding. And none of you could heal, heal this, all of y'all, y'all in church every Sunday? Sunday school every Sunday? Worship every Sunday? Bible study every week? Got prayer line at noon? Prayer line in the morning? And y'all ain't got no power to help somebody that's sick, to lift somebody else that's up? You, 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 you walking around with a title, but you ain't got no power? Because here's what we've come to learn, is that position and power don't always go together. Jesus had mercy. <laughs> position and power <laughs> don't always go together. Because listen, you ain't got to have no position and still you can have power. You ain't got to have no position and you still are able to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus says to the disciples, oh, you un unbelieving generation. That's, he, he really fusses at them. And so here's what I come to tell you. Authenticity is real. But here, let's, let's go here. The truth is this, and I hope you all can see that on the thing. All of us, here's I'm trying to help you. Here's the truth. All of us have areas where we struggle with our faith. Y'all got it? All of us. See, because that, that runs the gamut. Pastors, come on, y'all, they're pastors. I'll be the first one to testify that there have been moments where I struggled with my faith. There have been moments where I didn't know if God was really going to do it for me or not. Moments I didn't know whether God was going to bring members through or not. There are moments I struggled, literally struggled without my faith. Truth is, you are no less, here, here it is, you are no less of a Christian because you have temporary moments of faith failure. Mm, 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 mm. See, sometimes you got to doubt your doubt. <laughs> Good God from Zion. See, see you, you are no less of a Christian because you have moments of temporary faith failure. You, you, you are no less of a believer because there are moments where you've got fractured faith. Here, truth is, number three, God uses our moments of doubt to reinforce and reassure us Reassure us on the journey. See, God uses our moments where we are fractured in our faith to blow our mind. Jesus, have mercy. Listen, if you ever want your mind blown, how about those moments when you didn't think God was going to come through? How about those moments when you didn't know God was going to open the door? How about those moments when you didn't believe God was going to make a way? And God uses that very moment to blow your mind. The very thing you thought that God was not able to do or was not willing to do or, or you thought he could not do, that's the very thing that God pulls, pulls a miracle out, turns your life around uh, and blows your mind. There are moments, child of God, uh, that even when you've got fractured faith, that God will use your moments of doubt and your moments of fractured faith to do what? To create miracles in your life, uh, to blow your mind. Come on, y'all. And so that's why you got to be authentic. You know, come to him just as you are. 
be like, I like, listen, the father is the one that needs to be celebrated in the text. I, I know there's disciples here and I know there's a crowd of believers here, but I like this father. You know why? Because he was authentically who he was. But here's the second thing. And it's the last thing was acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Y'all have to write that down. Acknowledgement. I like this, y'all. Acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. You have to acknowledge the fact that there are moments and seasons where you are struggling with your faith. That's what he did. Listen, y'all, that's all he did. That's, come on, that's all he did. And what did he say? I believe, but help my unbelief. Jesus had already told him that all things are possible if you believe. And what did he say? He said, I do believe. He said, I don't, in other words, what he says is, Lord, I don't know, uh, Jesus, if um, I got enough faith for this. So I might as well just come on and acknowledge the fact um, that I'm struggling here. <laughs> I, Jesus, I, I just need to acknowledge the fact that um, I, may not, I may not be like so-and-so. Uh, I, I need to acknowledge, and here's what I'm here's what I'm trying to tell you: acknowledge your shortcomings. Acknowledge, if you're going to grow spiritually, acknowledge the fact that you are, have some growing to do. Acknowledge the fact that you've got to work on your faith. Acknowledge the fact that, that you're still growing. Acknowledge the fact that God is not through with you yet. Acknowledge the fact that, that you are a work in progress. Jesus, have mercy. Listen. Don't, don't, don't make, don't let nobody make you feel bad because you can't pray like others and you don't have the faith like somebody else and, and you're struggling and, and you, you stressed out because you don't know if God's going to acknowledge the fact, child of God, that you struggle at moments with your faith. I don't care who you are. I'll be the first one to tell you. I'll acknowledge the fact that as your pastor, and most of y'all are unionites, that as your pastor or as a pastor, there are moments, child of God, that I struggle. In this season of pandemic, I'll be the first one to tell you, I struggle with my faith. I struggle with this whole issue, child of God, and I'm done, of how we gonna make it through this, how, how things are going to, I, I, I know that God holds the world in his hands. I know that. I know we're going to be all right after a while and in the by and by. But can I dare tell you, there are moments I'm scared. Come on, y'all. Is there, is it all right for me to tell you that there are moments my faith is sh shaking? Is it all right for me to tell you that I got to go back to work for the village next week and I'm a person of faith, but I'm scared. Is it all right for me to tell you that there have been moments that there have been those who are on their sick bed and I don't know if I had enough faith in that moment to believe that they'll recover. I struggled with my faith. Is it all right for me to tell you that I, I preach the gospel, but there are moments I have to acknowledge to the Lord that God, I'm struggling. And I hope that there are those of you on, on this feed tonight. This is about 170 some of y'all on here. I hope tonight that, that you will lift up your head and that when you go down on your knees and pray, that you can tell God, God, there's some things I just got to put in your hand because this is a season where I struggle with my faith. It's nothing wrong with it. Because in order for you to grow spiritually, you have to be real. You see, you, you got to be real with yourself and you got to be real with God. God, God already knows anyway. And sometimes we try to act like we, like we try to hide something from him, but hello, knock, knock. Hello. Do you know you can't hide nothing from God? Do, do, do you realize that there, there is nothing that, that you can hide from him? Do you know that God knows everything? That God sees everything? 
God knows your level of faith. Can I give you some good news from the text? Here's what I like about the text. Y'all ready for this? That a father who had fractured faith had his prayer answered, Jesus and mercy. A father who comes to Jesus with fractured faith <laughs> got his prayer answered. His son was healed, Jesus have mercy. What am I trying to tell you? That even with fractured faith, God can still do some amazing things in your life when you are real and acknowledge the fact that you struggle in some areas. What am I trying to tell you? That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can even ask or think that God will go beyond your fractured faith and make you a believer that God still holds the whole world in his hands. Jesus have mercy. And so here's what I'm trying to tell you. Trust God. And even when your moments where your faith is fractured, still go to God in prayer and acknowledge the fact that you're struggling. I enjoyed this tonight. I'm done. That's right. I see, I see some of your some of your comments. We're human. Have mercy. Lord. Yes, Lord. I see all of y'all who are on here. I see your, I see some of the things that you're writing. And here's what I want to share with you tonight. The word has to take, take residence in your spirit. And the word has to be applicable to your very life. And so tonight I share with you tonight, I pray that God will do some amazing things that even in spite of, even in spite of all the things that you're dealing with, I pray that God will do some amazing things uh, in your life. There are all of us have moments of fractured faith, but God is able. Just be real about it. Don't try to be, compete with nobody else. Don't try to be like nobody else. Just know God sees your heart and God knows your desires. So tonight I'm grateful for all of you who are on the line with me tonight. So good to see all. I miss y'all. I miss you. Listen, can I just tell y'all before you go? I miss y'all. I can I say it one more time? I miss you. I, I really do. I really miss y'all. Um, and I hope that we'll be able to see each other real soon. I do want to say to you uh, tonight, we are grateful. Uh, for all of you, for your participation in worship and in Bible study. And many of you all are, are sharing with friends and family members who are on the line. So all of you who are guests tonight, um, I say hello to all of you and welcome and thank you all for being here. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Won't he will? Look, won't he will? Uh, I am just so grateful to you all um, being on here, uh, certainly on tonight. Uh, I just enjoyed this 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 Bible study uh, Bible study time on tonight. Remember, uh, as before we leave, can I say this to you? Remember, we have the uh, booming and zooming um, Sunday school, eight forty five every Sunday morning. The zooming and booming Bible uh, of um, Sunday school, and you can reach them on Zoom, and you can go on all of our social media outlets, and all of our information is there. Uh, I also want to share with you. Um, that on beginning on Wednesday of next week, the 20th through the 24th, those of you who are in this area, um, you need, if you want to get tested for COVID-19 or either the antibodies, you can go straight to, uh, to Union Baptist Church. You just need to make, um, make a appointment. I don't think if you don't have one, they're going to turn you away anyway, but you still need to make an appointment. Amen. Uh, please make an appointment. Amen. So that you can be tested. And I think that if you're a member of our church, it is free. I think all of you all, um, you don't have to rush down there the first day. It's going to be there all the way through Sunday. Um, I think you should come um, and be. Thank you, Maurice. Great word tonight. I see it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you, Jada, Lonnie. I see all of y'all on here tonight. So many. I can't name all of you. But I do want to say thank you so much. Uh, for being on here. Letha, I see you all. Thank you. We want to also take a moment to thank God for the food pantry, which will be open from 11 to 1230 on Friday. Amen. Uh, 11 to 1230 on Friday. Amen. Um, and so we ask that uh, we, first of all, we want to thank the helpers who have been helping uh, in the food pantry. We want to thank all of you. We want to thank all of you, amen, who've been helping uh, certainly in the food pantry, amen. Thank God for all of you. They'll be open again this Friday 
from 11 to 12.30, amen? Um, and then we want you to know we'll be together virtually at um, Sunday morning. We'll be together Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, amen, 10 o'clock, amen, 10 o'clock. Um, so make sure that you uh, make sure that you are with us and please continue uh, to tell somebody else in regards to what is going on at the church. Glad y'all enjoyed Bible study on tonight. I'm glad that you enjoyed uh, Bible study on tonight. Good to see all of you. Good to see um all of you on tonight. And can I, before we leave, I always want to do this. Um, just want to tell you, um, I want to tell you that we thank you for your giving. Giving, giving, it has been amazing. And I thank you. If you haven't given, uh, you can also do that online. And even if you want to give a, 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 a offering uh, for Bible study, a Bible study offer, you can always do that. Cash app is dollar sign UBC EXP. Text given is 516-563-4894. Text given is always easy. Amen. And if you're giving, please also make sure uh, that you put your name. Some of you all have different names for your handle. So in the notes section, please make sure that you put your name. Amen. So good. So good. So good. So good to be with you all on tonight. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll do some other things real soon uh, so that we all can be together um, we're going to try to do some more creative things uh, virtually. Don't know when we'll be back in our sanctuary. Uh, but until then, this is how we'll meet. We are still the church, whether we're in the building or not. Uh, certainly we are in the church. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Uh, your comments help me a lot. Thank you all so much. Let us continue to keep uh, one another uh, lifted in prayer. Amen. Uh, if you don't have to go out, don't go out, stay in and learn uh, certainly how to be safe. Amen. God bless you. I love all of you. We miss you. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you real soon. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time we've shared tonight. Build our faith, God, and let us be real with you, God. We thank you tonight for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and what? you're going to do for us even now in the future. We bless your name tonight. Lord, I pray for every person that is on this Bible study tonight. I pray that you would bless them abundantly, oh God. I ask that you would bless their households and even their families. We ask 